check this out. The sun has come out just in time. We've had a couple of days of rain, which is uh, not so bad when you're trying to film. At least you don't get shadows and contrasts. But I'm going to take this opportunity to at least um, document and uh, show you my Rapiculus Lelias. I have two hybrids as well, but um, yeah, let's go through them. If I can't read the tags very well, it's that my glasses are a little further away than my screen, so I apologize. But let's let's give this a go. So on the left here, you can see that this is uh, Lelia Giuliani. I don't have any images, seeing as none of these have flowered for me yet. I'm reluctant to go and check them out on the web in case as a new channel you get hit hard. Um, and the current circumstances, YouTube is understaffed for reasons. So yeah, we're just going to look at some foliage and cute tiny little plants. So look, Giuliani has actually now, I don't know if you can see it, it's working on a new growth. There you go which is excellent, excellent news. I have most of them, most of them in small lava rock mixed with ceramis for the wicking. It is a self, um, a semi-hydro setup, not self-watering. It is semi-hydro, even though I have a mask outside, but that's just for ease of transportation. It makes lifting and moving them much easier. And what I've done as well on every one of them I have put sprinkles of sand on the top and as I water the sand disperses into the media which helps for some water retention inside the media and the nooks and crevices how they would grow in nature. These are the two hybrids so that's what I'm doing now every time every once in a while I'll sprinkle a little bit more sand and then that'll be it only at the beginning I'm not going to do this continuously otherwise it'll be just satin sand but basically because they're on uh, rock cliff faces uh, exposed to extreme stream conditions uh, there's always sand and everything in amongst all um, their locations so I figured I'm going to try and replicate that with putting sand all over the media as well and then here is Ketiana, and this is awesome as well. It is starting a new growth right there. So that looks really promising. I have had these now maybe two months, three months. Um, yeah, some, no, two months probably. Fornery is not doing much of anything, but it is not shriveling. And that for me, I'll take it. I'll take it. These little bulbs in the back here, they were already quite dry when I got it. So I'm not too worried about that. But what I'm worried and really what I'm looking at is this, this row right here. And uh, so far no change, no new growth, but no shriveling. And here is, let me just make sure I read the track from, I'll, Alvarenguensis, there you go, Alvarenguensis, I should remember that, Alvarenguensis, very happy to see that this one is loving it, there's a new growth coming right here, this is all happening now in the last month, I mean once they start they will grow fast, but um, it is a slow start, so with these there's a bit of patience, here's Kauskitsiano, there's nothing going on here, which is a good sign because that also means there is no shriveling. So that's awesome. And here is Rupestris. And this came to me with this little growth here, and it was down there. So all of that in a short period of time. I can't see any roots, which I'm not too bothered about, that I can't see them as long as there's no shriveling and that growth is maturing without des desiccating this leaf here. So that's awesome, I'm happy about that. Here is one that I'm really pleased about as well. This is Regina, and this has just happened in the last week. A root tip. When I cleaned up this plant, I figured, okay, it's a goner if I don't put it in sphagnum moss, but I just thought, okay, if you live, you live. If you die, well, I can't help you. I'm going to put it in exactly how I would find it in nature. 
the only shriveling I have is in the back leaf over here. I'm okay with that, but nothing else. So there we go, we have a root. Awesome. Here we have Flava Sulina. Flava Sulina is two plants. It's split, broken half. It's extremely wobbly. This section over here, I'm actually propping it up with a bit of lava rock so it won't move. And I don't move this plant in, uh, as a rule for the time being, but for the sake of the video, I brought it out. And here we have in the second plant two new growths, which is amazing because that means at least one of them will do well. And then back here is my experiment with Lelia Flava in just Lekka, no, nothing else, just Lekka and uh, self-watering because it, uh, A, it's a bigger plant and I didn't want to, st I don't want to be too watering, uh, too much of a watering slave in summer. So all I'm doing right now, it's looking pretty bad. Here you can see signs of shriveling. Okay, this leaf was damaged when it came, but okay, fine, now it's gone. But this, here, here, yeah, up here, sorry, you can see the shriveling. Yeah. So I have these two new growths that I'm kind of playing jackpot with. Um, I keep spraying the base with seaweed and that's it. And I'm hoping that something's gonna happen soon. Otherwise we may have to say goodbye to this one. But there's enough pseudobulbs for it to draw from. These two came all dry and shriveled when I got it. There's enough energy back here, so I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. What else can you do? This is Lelia Zip. It is a Rapiculus cross. Uh, forgive me, I don't know the exact heritage and all this. I have it in my notes, but my notes aren't with me. And this one has just taken off. At the beginning, I put a little bit of uh, microfiber on the top to simulate more humidity as the roots were growing in, because I didn't want to risk anything desiccating on the root tips, as you can see right there. One has kind of stopped growing. It's not dead. It still has a little tip, but um, I'm going to let that go to see how it reacts because now I know I have a lot of roots in the, in the pot. So I'm going to just watch the one and see how it reacts with Lekka and keep that as it is because I know I have plenty going on down there now. Basically, if I lift the plant and I tug it, it's solid. I can't. I can't tug it. can't lift it up. So that to me, it's solid. That little root is just me watching to see how it reacts. And here is a Harpophila, which I'm really looking forward to. And I hope, I hope it makes it. As you can see, there has been absolutely no change in its media since I got it because I don't want to stress this one. It's not looking too hip on the leaves. That's why it's not going to get challenged any further than it already is. So I'm leaving it until I see something happening at the base. Contrary to what I always say, clean them up, put them up and get them to get sorted. No, not with this one. Uh, I'm watching it. I don't know if there's any movement down there, if it's me wishful thinking or I don't know. But anyway, that one's staying put until it shows me it can be moved and then it goes straight into the same setup as all the others. And here's Crispy Labia, this little one here. No movement, no new growths, only shriveling on the back here, these two. That's what I'm looking at. The others are still absolutely fine. So I'm hoping, keeping my fingers crossed, that will settle down soon. And here I have Esal, Esalkenia, that's it, Esalkenia. Same thing again, straight into the lava pumice and here, I harvested grit. Oh yes, the precious grit from the pots that um, that they came with. <laughs> I sifted out the grit and put it back on, even though there's a few little stones. But anyway, you know, use what you can. And then I put my sand, of course, around it and some already has dispersed inside. But no, I don't see any new growths, but this plant is not deteriorating whatsoever. These wrinkles, that's how I got it. It's hanging in there. 
it's doing okay given the current circumstances so yeah for the time being as it's um it's kind of cold and always wet and raining i have them inside until the temperatures reach about 14 degrees at night and i have them under my uh blur pull red blue lights for growth that's where i'm focusing them on uh within about a 10 no 20 meter uh, 20 centimeter distance to hopefully encourage growth. That is the plan. Growth of roots is the main, main, main initiative here. So yeah, I just thought I would um, put these up on the record. We have them, they're here. I'm walking backwards, I don't want to trip and um, see how they go. The new growths are very encouraging and they actually like the environment, the setup. And the other ones, well, I hope they talk to each other and get a move on. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope that uh, this has been of some help. If not, let me know in the comments below. And I'll try and be of any help I can if you have these. Also, let me know what you do with them. Where are you? How do you grow them? All right. Ninja Orchids saying goodbye. Just forgot, maybe it's helpful to some. And another thing I do is I miss them every evening uh, evening and sometimes morning depending on their the atmosphere the air how much humidity because from what I read where they live they appreciate the dew that happens in the morning and evenings when the temperatures drop and rise so that is basically their water sustenance is dew not a full watering that is my understanding and that is what I do. So I just wanted to add that quickly, even though I just signed off on my previous video. So I already put them back in their place, but I did want to mention that really briefly in case that helps somebody. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye.